Well, everyone looking forward to the National Sports Festival in the calendar year 2022. We understand that it will be in the month of November. Omodia, and um, taking a look at um, the situation, the Delta State Governor said that um, this will be memorable for years to come. Of course, uh, we must give kudos to the Governor of uh, Delta State. And uh, if you look back to past uh, sports festivals, National Sports Festival, you will really really want to put uh, a thumbs up for for delta state how they have triumphed you know it's volleyball you know basketball swimming, swimming soccer i mean you, you just have to give it to them and this is another way to show that they are a sport loving state and they are ready to you know discover more talents you know in the national sports festival so kudos to, to them well in the last 24 hours all this happened in delta states the sports minister was there but then He's joining us live in the studio as we take a look at um, the National Sports Festival in Canada Year 2022 plans, you know, for the youths in the year 2022 and um, how the government has perceived the youth so far um, at this stage. It's nice to have you on set. Honorable Minister for Youth and Sports, Mr. Sunday Dari, good afternoon to you. Thank you, Midano. Good well, afternoon. Well, let's um, take a look at um, the National Sports Festival, a date um, in the month of November. 2022 is setting at this stage. You were in Delta State yesterday. Um, a local organizing committee um, was set up. And uh, for sports lovers in the country, they are already looking forward to the sports festival. Absolutely. You know that uh, we felt it was really important to move quickly. Already almost uh, a year has been lost because of uh, COVID-19. Edo 2020 was delayed for a year because of the postponements and the pandemic. And since Delta was announced, they had actually gone to work. But we needed to sign the MOU. That is basically the agreement that binds both parties together. And we felt that uh, what better place to do it than to have it in a Sabah, have our council on, National Council on Sports hold this meeting, the technical committee look at all the details. And right after that, we had the LOC announced. And the ministry, of course, announced the MOC almost immediately. You know, you have to clap with both hands. You need the LOC and the MOC to work together. Well, um, you basically made mention of the fact that um, the Ministry of Youth um, is also, you know, setting up um, some bodies to take a look at um, sports critically, um, also which involves, you know, um, physically challenged people and all that. Um, uh, can you tell us much more about that? Well, we have seen over time the, the role of uh, the para-athletes. We've seen how they brought so many medals and glory to the country. And the ministry had worked assiduously with the head of service to kind of give them special attention. So right now we have um, a department headed by a director that will focus on not just the National Sports Festival, okay. but also uh, para sports. Uh, we believe that there's a lot of ability in their disability. Uh, the gold that is won in the Olympics is what is weight in gold, just like the one won at the Paralympics. The gold is gold. Mm -hmm. And we felt we needed to give them the attention they needed, bring in the experts to work with them. And I think that itself will encourage them. Now, let's um, take a look at them. Um up things um, in the calendar year 2021. Um, we had the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games rescheduled for the calendar year 2021. Um, we had also um, the Paralympic Games and um, other sports in um, events. Um, the Nations Cup, the AFCON tournament, which was meant to hold in the calendar year, was moved you know, to 2022. But by and large, how will you describe the performance of Team Nigeria at the international level when you take a look at them um, sports in general in the calendar year? Well, I think it's been a momentous year when you look at uh, w the fact that we came out of uh, one year of complete law the shutdown mm -hmm. of sporting activities which affected uh, our own sports uh, men and women for one year we look at the fact that in spite of the limitations of the COVID-19 pandemic we are able to um, go through all the qualifiers for the Olympics we we're able to show up for almost all the sports that we entered for and our athletes went through a lot Mm. you know going through those limitations now the fact that we landed in the, at the olympics with other countries is critical but we also saw our athletes put up superlative performances there which led us to have two medals uh, recorded as one of our best performances in 13 years of course there were challenges but we cemented those challenges there were lessons learned there and steps already been taken to make sure that our preparations are top notch our athletes get the benefit of the support they need for the first time, we had the Adopt an Athlete, where over 22 athletes got support 
$10,000, $20,000, some in Naira, some in dollars to support them. And we hope that can continue as we prepare for the uh, uh, Olympics, uh, for the Commonwealth Games. But beyond that, you look at in the space of six to eight weeks, we had the Olympics, we had the Paralympics, we had the Junior World Championships mm -hmm. in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. And you look at, if you put all of those performances together, unprecedented on the part of Nigeria, because you go through the bookmakers, what they've written, you see our performances way above what has happened in the past, and you see the trajectory looking up for our athletes and for sports development in the country. There are so many other things that happen beyond the competitions. Well, um, if you've just tuned in, you're watching the program Sports Desk at this stage, and if you're watching on TVC Entertainment and you want to continue with the George George session, we have um, a special guest in the studio, the Minister of Youth and Sport, Mr. Sunday Diary, and I also have um, my colleague, my strike partner, Modia, in the studio, and then uh, we're taking a look at Adam um, Sports in the calendar year 2021. Well, um, Omodia, let, let, me, let me come to you. The Minister made mention of the fact that... Um, um, the Adopt an Athletes Initiative, where um, persons in the country invested um, in um, sports um, athletes. And um, looking at them, some of the challenges or some of the fears, um, mm. continuity um, is a challenge. Uh, most times when you don't have um, the same sports minister in the next four years, yeah, there are fears about, you know, initiatives like mm -hmm, this and mm -hmm. all that but considering how some athletes in the past have dumped the country you know running for qatar mm. and all other countries even changing their names yes yeah um, recently we witnessed the adopt a stadium um where facilities in the country are also getting upgrade from the national stadium yeah. in lagos yeah. And also that of the Moshuda Biola Stadium in Abuja. In Abuja. Yeah. And um, well, we'll be hearing from the sports minister about how ready that is if it is ready to host matches. But by and large, what do you make of this adopting athletes initiative and um, others? Well, uh, one of a kind, first of a kind uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned. Very laudable. Um, you must commend the the sports minister and the minister of sports and. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you mentioned something now, how our atlas dumped us in the past. Mm. I think uh, we have to look inwards to see that that, uh, you know, doesn't happen again. We, we saw at that Olympics that just ended how a lot of Nigerian names were, you know, representing other countries, other countries you know. But, but we still did a lot better. We did, we did good. But, you know, I, I wish it, co it continues, the adopter. Um, an athlete initiative, you know, but like you said, regimes are different, but uh, it's, uh, it's a blueprint that we need to follow because it has really, really given us some good athletes. Honorable Sports Minister, some of the biggest challenges faced in sports has got to be the issue of facilities and also motivation, you know, for sportsmen and women in the country. Um, you made mention of this adopt an athlete. Now we're seeing upgrade of facilities. If Nigeria is to have world beaters or the best athletes in the world then facilities are key and um, we've seen the national stadium in lagos getting you know um renovation work that of the abuja national stadium the mq abiola stadium um there are fears that after this administration um will this initiative gets a form of continuity and all that well, I think those fears are justified because of uh, the experience we've had as a country in the past. But what we've done this time around is to, in a deliberate way, build in a, a sustainable model. I'll give you an example. They adopt a pitch for the Mashuda Biala Stadium. Adopt a pitch. We made sure that there's at least a two-year maintenance contract tied to mm. the person that is the Dangote Group that fixed it. Our plan is that before the end of those two years, we'll get another corporate organization to maintain it. This time it's going to be less cost because it's just a question of maintenance. And we're lining up about, at least we hope to line up about three or four organizations because the bill is known to maintain, is a consistent bill, and then we can pass that on. We hope to use that same sustainable model for the uh, National Stadium in Surulere. For the Obafemi Awolo Stadium in Oya State, we've not been able to get a, a corporate organization or an individual to do it. So what we've done is to leverage on government funding. Uh, this year, for instance, we're able to just use around 45 million. Next year, there's a budget of about 400 million. And that will be able to deliver the member 
of the Obafemi Awolo Stadium. And then we'll look for the maintenance contract that will go with it. And we believe that if we continue with our public-private partnership, you know, driven by the ADOPT initiative and, you know, what comes to the corporations, we will be able to deal with uh, bringing on board several of our sporting infrastructures. You made mention of infrastructure. We've also worked on a policy in the last two years, which is the National Sports Industry Policy. It's a review of the sports policies we've had in the past. Okay. What's really different this time is that we're building in a business model, a business orientation. And we've had a major leap. The federal government has reclassified sports from recreation to business. To that bill. We have seen the impact of that in the national development for the next four years, where we have 88 billion for the first time allocated to sports under President Mohamed Buhari. And then we have 60 billion allocated to youth development for the next uh, four years. And then if you take it from there, the three things that we need in that policy are three triggers. And it's the same benchmarked across the world. We call them the three I's. Infrastructure. You need infrastructural rationalization. Beyond the brick and mortar, you need the equipment, the digital equipment, the sporting equipment. We're looking just beyond the brick and the mortar. That's one. You must provide that. The second one is investment, both public and private investment, because you must invest in order to get return on it. The federal government will invest, the private sector will. The third I is incentives. You must provide incentives on the part of government that will make people invest. So I must be willing to invest in sports rather than invest in manufacturing yeah. or somewhere else, because I know that there are certain incentives that will help me and bring back some ROI for me. Now, how ready is the Abuja um, Stadium, the MQ Abiola Stadium, in terms of um, hosting matches? Um, it's been a long while. Um, fans in Abuja um, saw top great matches. Yes, recently there was um, a test run of the presidential cup. But then, let's take a look at um, the big one. Um, I mean, know, I'm, I'm sure you will have gotten the feedback from, from the four top clubs that played the, the, for the yeah, tournament. Yeah. And uh, the media was there the whole three days. And uh, if there was anything that uh, there was negative about that pitch, they will have told you. But what's important is this. How ready is that pitch? The pitch is ready. Recall that the very second day that we took over the pitch from the Dangode group, we, we wrote the NFF to invite CAF and FIFA because that was the certified pitch before. That certification expired about uh, less than a year ago, and you need to renew it. Yeah. And there's always a checklist. So as we speak, I think the CAF have been there. In the next several weeks, they will, they will run through and then give us a checklist. One thing we know that we need there is the VAR, for instance. And mm -hmm. we're working in that process as a government to see how we can get that. There's a place that we have in place. So that stadium had never been completely out of use. It's a world-class, world-standard stadium. When the FIFA president came, he said it. He said, this place is good enough for international matches. He felt the grass, looked around and the infrastructure. The South African ambassador went there. The coach, Waldron, of the Super Falcon said, this is where I want my team to play. So that place is as ready. I tell you for free that the camp for our Eagle, Super Eagles for AFCON is going to be in Abuja. Okay, that's an interesting, and um, you're getting that um, um, first hand that um, the camp of the Super Eagles will be in the federal capital. But before I dive into, you know, the Super Eagles, um, where I know the fans also um, really want to hear from the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports in the country, let's take a look at um, the youths in the country. Recently, you made mention of the fact that um, um, we've seen the sports sector um, having um, a different outlook from the usual recreational perceived mm -hmm. um, environment in the country to a business model. Um, let's take a look at interest in this administration when it comes to the youths of the country. Um, this is under your ministry. Um, what has it been like, you know, in the last couple of years? Well, absolutely. I, I think that uh, if you do a clear audit, you will find that, that under this administration, under the watch of President Mohamed Buhari, uh, we have we've had about 42 different youth focus programs domiciled in about seven or eight ministries and several uh, parastatals and agencies most of them are ongoing some of them have wrapped up and when you look at the depth of these programs 
you will see an administration that has placed youth development top of the agenda. Let me speak to the Minister of Youth and Sports Development. We've had some really uh, pioneering uh, uh, policies and initiatives approved by Mr. President. The first, uh, of course, is the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund, which is 25 billion per year for three years. It's called the 75 billion Naira Youth Investment Fund. And that is ongoing. It's going to go on for three years. three years. As we speak, we know that there are 25,000 people that have been finally slated. They have been undergoing training. As mm -hmm. soon as that training wraps <coughs> up and the access they have, people were able to apply from different countries. And the data bears us out. Now, the future of decent jobs is in digital skills. Mm -hmm. The future of employment for our youth mm -hmm. is in entrepreneurship. And this, under this precedent, we've developed what we call a concept that is end-to-end, -end, training into enterprise. Better said, training into entrepreneurship. That is, training alone is no longer enough. enough. You must equip this youth that after the training, mm -hmm. you train me as a robotics engineer, so you train me in the market, I will start looking for a job. It's better we turn them into self-starters, wealth creators, and employers of labor. So at the end of your training, you're given the tools, the resources that you need to turn you into an entrepreneur. And that way, collectively, you can either be a sole entrepreneur or you work with others, other youth, to be able to uh, employ others and produce uh, what you need to produce to contribute to national development. Yes. I can speak of the DA program. That is mm -hmm. what we're looking at. That is digital skills acquisition, That's it. Uh, entrepreneurship, employability, leadership, and mentoring. When you look at all our programs, they come under each of this, and there are several of them. The point that must be made is that there's a need to apply yourself through the process of application to be selected and to benefit. Okay. And from our experience, what we have seen under the COVID-19 stimulus program of training that we've done, we've done over 5,200 training, is the fact that the responses we've received from across the state shows that we've had a shift in the believability of government programs. I'll give you an example. In Amber State, about 5,000 people applied. We had slot for 120 people. Wow. And the data is there. In Kaduna State, about 3,250 applied. We could only pick about 98, 95 people. So when you look at the spread, the youth are beginning to come and compete for those spaces, mm -hmm. for training, for entrepreneurship, etc. Now, for this, in the last two years, we have on record that we've been able to train 280, 290,000 youth. And beyond the training, Beyond the training is that of leadership. Youth inclusiveness in governance is now paramount. The government is alive to that. The ministry is alive to that. That is why November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, we held the first ever national youth conference that had 10 youth delegates from every single state of the federation. Never happened before. And it was titled Youth Inclusiveness, Employment, Peace, and Security. Several thematic whatever, we had about 38 panelists, and we had, we planned for 450 youth. We eventually had 800 of them. And we have seen that these youth are actually leaders of today, and we need to engage them wow. now, so that they have become assets for our country in the immediate future. Well, this is indeed key, and um, we hope that um, this um, will see um, a form of belief, you know, between uh, the youths and indeed uh, the governments um, going forward, especially when you take a look at um, the digital literacy and skill acquisition, um, which, is, uh, which has been um, the brain box of the Ministry of um, Youths and sports under Mr. Sunday Diary. Well, quickly, let's um, change gear and um, take a look at them, um, the AFCON tournament. Omo, all eyes will be on Cerezo, Austin, yes. Guavoy. And, yes. Um, in <laughs> Group D, mm. all three countries there have released their provisional squad. We await that of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Yes, we, I, I know it's certainly going to come. And uh, like you said, a lot of work uh he knows it uh, nigerians are very passionate about football you know and um i like uh, the fact that you know is one of the 94 sets when i take a look at the super egos i see that 94 set the best managers we have in nigeria now 
arguably are from that 94 set. Yeah. You talk about Olise, Amunike, Siasia, Finidi. Look at all George. of them now. That's to tell you the impact that, you know, uh, uh, West have had on them, you they know, leaders. going forward. And they are leaders in their own ranks. And Cerezo, Kesha, I talked Blessed about Blessed certification. Also. He's a, a European license coach. So there's no gain saying the fact that he's qualified to take the Super Eagles to, the, uh, to AFCON. What we just need to do now, we have the personnel. I will beat my chest any day, any time. We have the personnel to win AFCON. What we need to do now is a format, a philosophy. It sucks out to make sure that we get into the final. Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports, um, it's time to focus on the AFCON tournament. Counting down about 20 days or less mm, yeah. to the biggest soccer fiesta in Africa. Nigerians are passionate about football from the north to the east, west and south. Right. A lot of people have talked about the timing of the sacking of the manager, Gennett Raw. But looking at what we have today, um, how confident are you in terms of the Super Eagles having a good outing at the African tournament? Well, I'm absolutely confident. And my confidence is in the skills of uh, the Super Eagles players. We've seen them several times play club side. We've seen them perform. Uh, for their clubs. We've seen them deliver and score goals. Uh, so my confidence is rooted in the skills of these our players. What we need then is to blend them together into such a rhythm. Like Just like he said, the, the DNA of our football is missing. Yeah. It's so telegraphic. Yeah. If uh, Ulisse has the ball, uh, Amokachi knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he just walks in sync. We need to get that rhythm back. We need to bring back that DNA. You also look at West Half during that period. Whatever I said, there's always two, three, four home base players. Mm. That's what they also bring there. They bring the African criticality and physicality in mm. the defense mm. that makes other strikers really run off. You understand? I, d I don't want to tell you what it means because your leg is your, it's your yeah, asset. And it. then when you see the fierceness and the ruggedness, so that, there's the sense in that blend. So I, I have confidence in that squad. But also, that confidence must extend to the, to the bench, the technical crew. It, it's important. Being able to read a game, being able to make the necessary changes, being able to have a discernible pattern. Mm. Nigerians mm. love football. Not all Nigerians can play football, but most Nigerians understand football. They're able to look at games being played by other countries, other teams, and located within the system and the game played by a country. And that's why you've seen the general complaints that has come. And I think that, you see, decisions are often not, they're difficult decisions that have to be taken, irrespective. Yeah. This is not a popularity game. And I think that we have done well to take the decision that is necessary. The time is short, but don't forget that the preparation on the part of our players and our team is not limited to the next, last 20 days. It's been going on. All the matches they played, the friendlies, uh, the qualifiers they played, the matches they're playing, they won't even be released from their clubs until <laughs> about 10 days or one week. Yeah. So yeah. what is the question about 20 days, 20 days? No, it's what happens when they come together, the style, the pattern, what uh, Aguavon and others bring on board, that's what we want to see on the field of play. Well, um, looking at the situation, um, uh, Victor Osime um, took to his Twitter from Italy today and um, said he will be available 100% for the AFCON tournament if he's chosen by the manager of the side, which is um, Cerezo Guavoin to represent the most populous black nation on earth, which means um, uh, to a large extent he's ready. Um, for action and um, reports say that um, he should be playing on the 6th of January also for his club. And that's his tweet. I won't be available for AFCON 100% unless if I'm not among the players picked to represent Nigeria. This is the passion, you know, oozing from Victor Osime, the top scorer, so to say, for mm -hmm. the Super Eagles through the AFCON and World Cup qualification sports. And um, that was today at about three minutes past two. Um, other sports minutes, that, that brings me to the issue of the reward system, you know, for our athletes um, across board. Um, how will you describe the reward system under your administration? Um, some have been, you know, um, talking. There were some challenges 
um, at some point in time, but it was quickly rectified where athletes on scholarships, you know, were also um, being given some form of um, encouragement by the sports ministry. But this was withdrawn because um, to a large extent, um, this does not go down well with schools abroad when their athletes on scholarship. How will you describe the reward system so far? I, I think the reward system that uh, has been in place, I must confess, needs um, a reboot, needs uh, improvement. And uh, in the last two years, what we have done is to look at the concepts that we made and look at new concepts. The idea of uh, the adopt an athlete was one way hmm. to give a shot in the arm, to it was a textron just for the Olympics. Okay. We've seen the impact. And we Wrestlers like Odoya, the Kuroye. Yes, they got adopted. You know. So we're trying to look at how we can extend that to the Commonwealth Games. Okay. But beyond that, in the uh, national sports industry policy is uh, the, the suggestion to have a sports development fund that would take care of grant. Just something similar to what you have in the UK. Provides a grant, scholarship, etc. Okay. Hmm. What we've also seen over time even though the ministry doesn't provide that scholarship again. We've been able to work with the Nigerian Olympic Committee, yeah, no, the likes of uh, Tobia Musa and the rest. As we speak, I think over 10 Nigerians are drawing scholarship from the Nigerian Olympics Committee. And we've had promise, promises on the part of uh, the NOC, uh, Bugumel, working with the IOC, that that number, the ministry has pressed the button to say we need to increase Please. that number. But when you look at the, the reward system just needs a very comprehensive approach. We're going to need a pot of money in such a way that that money is administered mm -hmm. by an independent body and then a certain criteria. We have templates to, to borrow from. We've looked at what obtains in South Africa, what obtains in the UK, what obtains in Canada, and that has been translated as one of the major components of our sports industry policy. Now, I wanted to speak to the... the, the the tweet by uh, Osimen. Okay. And the point is, it goes back to the point I made when I said my confidence is rooted players. in the players. In That's the players. exactly what I'm talking <coughs> about. Mm. A patriotic player, one of the best in the world, and he says he believes in his ability and is willing to play. You know, when I look at if they call me, I just, I just smile <laughs> because what we needed to hear from him is that I'm fit to play. That's all. That's you all. should just leave the rest to us. And that's why I'm saying it is going to be left to the players. Let me tell you what I know obtained in the past. The 94 team, yeah. if they met together and they said, look, this game, we're going to win it. That's it. The coach, once they decide, they go there and, and they, they, and they, they kill that game. Mm. We need that kind of spirit, that kind mm. of, and I think that gradually it's going to come back. Well, let's take a look at them, um, you know, um, this year, September precisely, I was in the federal capital when the Federation's election, you know, saw the lights of day. And then this would bring us, you know, to the challenges um, in sport. Um, at the moment, um, for badminton, um, they are yet to have their election. Uh, basketball in Nigeria. Um, what's your take on them, some of the crises? Um, Bedeviling, you know, um, some sports federations. In the well, it depends on how you look at it. You know, you might, some people see the cup half empty. Some see the cup half full. I yeah. see the cup half full. If you have 32, 38 federations, and barely two federations are having problems, the, the cup is definitely even more than half full. Yeah. Basketball was inherited? Basketball was inherited. Badminton is just something that just came up. But then you also look at how seamlessly that election went for almost virtually all the federations. Some of them had new presidents, some of them had new board members. And that signposted the fact that the federations this time are refocusing on the sports and on the athletes. Basketball has been on the ascendancy in the last two, three years. And it's unfortunate that the crisis that lingered on eventually kind of blew over. Expectedly, too, because once you get to an election, yeah, everybody waits and says, the election cycle is completed, we're going to move. But we've seen how we've been able to manage it. We're at the point in which uh, we had a 30, November 30 deadline, and then the ministry worked with FIBA, and then we had an opening. We set up a reconciliation committee that saw all the parties. After we had four meetings, 
that were yeah. unsuccessful, stakeholders meeting, and then we had the reconciliation committee. The report was turned in uh, about eight to ten days ago. That report has recommendations. We're going to work with those recommendations. We've also had FIBA say, look, let's have these elections latest by January 31st. We're working in tandem with that. So we've moved from um, a position of almost getting banned to recover to a position in which we're even able to get the Tigers mm -hmm. to Angola. Mm -hmm. Not just get them there, because we had challenges. But we proved the point. And we also had a blend. When we had the Super 8, we picked five of the best players. We yeah. picked the local coach yeah. to match up with our players from the U.S. The kind of blend we're talking about. And we saw them lead their group mm -hmm. confidently. So we're moving on. The issue of the elections, and I keep saying it, unless we separate politics from our sports. I know that there's sports, there's politics and sports. But the kind of politics we talk about in sports is, is more developmental, more competitive, not you know this very acidic political one. And I hope that... Uh, uh, by January or February, basketball will be out of this uh, gloomy okay. uh, weather, and then the, the athletes can have the benefit, and Nigeria can continue on that trajectory. Well, it's time to call it the Honorable Sports Minister, but then in um, four to five seconds, 2022 plans for sports. Starts with the AFCON. The AFCON. Like, you know, I said it at the total um, uh, meeting that we had at Sheraton, that uh, I said I will keep praying. I've seen the cup. I've held the cup. I said, I'll keep praying Hallelujah, that our team wins that cup. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we have the materials. We yes, have the players. We do. we do. And I'm sure they will click and they will do this country proud. I must say a very big thank you, Minister of Youth and Sports, Mr. Sander Diary, and um, Omadia of Model 2.3 Max FM. You can join them from uh, 6 p.m. on video. Yeah. And then we will give you everything you need, you know, as far as um, sport entertainment is concerned on Max Model 2.3 FM. And many thanks to you out there for being a part of the show.